Hi, I'm Kaylin from Scotland Shop. I'm here in beautiful, sunny Lower Manhattan. I have the Statue of Liberty behind me on my left. And we are here to do the Scots Who Built New York walking tour of historic locations where Scottish architects, designers, and engineers helped create New York City. We're gonna be following the financial district tour. Very exciting, let's go. My name is John Kinnear. I'm an architect and architectural historian and a board member of the American Scottish Foundation. Camilla and I are both members of the uh, Landmarks Alliance, which is an organization that was founded to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Landmarks Commission in New York City. Um, all members were asked to put together a project which would help celebrate the event. Uh, Camille and I came up with the idea of the Scots who built New York. Uh, we were somewhat aware that certain Scots were extremely important to the development of New York City, Andrew Carnegie being one of them, of course, and some of the architects that we knew who were like Charles McKim of McKim, Mead and White, which were of Scottish descent. So we started doing the research and the research ended up with nine specific lectures about the development of the city from New Amsterdam on up to the current day. And these projects, uh, these talks centered on different parts of the city. And today we're gonna discuss the Wall Street area. We'd like to start at Trinity Church, which was founded in 1697 with a land grant from William III and his wife, Anne. Uh, it was interesting that the, uh, the church was granted the land and they had to pay one peppercorn a year in rent. As it turns out, the rent was never collected until Queen Elizabeth II visited New York in, 17, in 1976. And she was, she was presented with a jar full of 200 some odd peppercorns. Uh, the church itself was, was founded and uh, many prominent New Yorkers were involved at the time. Uh, Alexander Hamilton became an important member of the church. Uh, Washington, of course, went to, went to services here. Captain William Kidd, another Scot, who we'll talk about later, uh, was a member and helped raise the money to build the church. The church burial yard, of course, includes people like Alexander Hamilton and his wife, and we'll be talking about them a little later on also. Uh, just around the corner, or just across the street actually, is number one Wall Street. That's the building that was done by Ralph Walker, a Scot, first generation American Scot. And he was very famous for buildings that he did in the dark Art Deco style. Uh, number one, a good example, and not too far from the World Trade Center site, is his what's now known as the Verizon building, which was always a telephone, New York telephone building. Slightly damaged during the 9-11 attack, but it's now been completely restored. Walking a little bit down Broad Street, we come to the New York Stock Exchange. This building was uh, done by the architect George Post, was of Scottish descent, and the building pretty much stands the way it did at the time. It's of course, uh, in the home of the two very famous statues that were just placed in the middle of Broad Street near the near the Stock Exchange. Now we're walking a little bit east on, on uh, Wall Street and Federal Hall is the Greek Revival style building, which was originally uh, a much more colonial style brick building, which is the site where George Washington actually uh, was sworn into office as our first president. The structure you see now is built in about 1830s and it was done by uh, Town and Davis, both architects of Scottish descent. And the building uh, to this day has been the site of many of our Scottish uh, events over the years. 
a little bit further down the street, we come to uh, 20 Exchange Place, which is the home of many Scottish organizations and banks. Uh, the building is, is, again, it's a good example of the style of the 30s. One Hanover Square was the site of the uh, New York uh, Cotton Exchange. And it was also the site of the British Memorial Garden, now known as Queen Elizabeth II's 9-11 Memorial Garden, uh, dedicated to all the victims, all the British victims of the 9-11 attack. The Bannermans won a contest to be the landscape designers for the park. And uh, Bannermans, of course, of Scottish descent. Prominent across the street is India House, which was one of the first exchange buildings in New York City. And around the corner is Stone Street, which was the first paved street in New York City. Uh, all the people, all the businesses along the street all contributed money to get the stones put in place. Uh, a lot of those buildings are still there today. Hanover Square well, originally was a very fashionable um, residential area, somewhat built like a crescent, like you would find in Bath. Uh, William Kidd, the notorious, eventually became the notorious pirate, but he lived in the square in the most prominent house in the area. Then we proceed on to Francis Tavern, which was an early, early um, public house. And the Scottish organization St. Andrews had their meetings there as well as many other societies in the city in the early days. other direction, looping back to Broadway, we have 25 and 26 Broadway. This is the Cunard Building and the Standard Oil Building. Both of them were, were done with Scottish descent architects, William Lamb, one of them. And of course, the Cunards were Scottish also. Many of the big steamship companies were in these two buildings. And, they, and uh, down the street from them, you have uh, Clinton Castle, which was an original fortress uh, protecting the harbor. Uh, this was this was then turned into one of the first uh, entertainment venues in New York City by John McComb Jr., a Scottish architect who was responsible for many many other projects in the city, including City Hall. Mm -hmm. 